Hey guys, so the other day Pavel Sportsel was playing in a concert when this happened. <laughs> Oh. oh my god. Oh. I think he picks it up with his foot. Like he, he catches it with his foot. Watch this. It probably saved the violin. Like these kinds of accidents can happen a lot. So dropping an instrument is a very common thing to happen to string players, especially violinists. But it even happens to cellists that people trip over instruments. Or I actually recently had a client who fell down some steps with her and then fell on top of her cello. What do you do? I mean, obviously, you, you do everything in your power to try and prevent these accidents. So let's talk about two things. So let's talk about how to prevent these accidents. I had one client who accidentally, like she fainted and accidentally destroyed her instrument. And her mum literally took the instrument away and never showed it to her again. She bought it, she, she came in and chose a new instrument. So, you know, like an instrument, it's it's an extension of yourself. So it, it would be so devastating if, you know, if that ever happened. But so there's, there's a couple of things. So first, what do you do? How do you prevent it? Or how do you do your best to prevent accidents? Secondly, what do you, what would you do once it's happened? So let's talk about the first thing. How do you best prevent an accident? And you can see, like, in this film clip, the conductor is really animated. And, you know, conductors, it's what they do. So for a soloist, it's always worth standing out of reach of <laughs> the conductor. And it's probably important for stage setup as well to make sure that a soloist will have enough space on the stage. But then you also have, you know, for example, the bow of like if you're in an orchestra, the bow of the your desk partner could accidentally catch your instrument. So these these kinds of things happen. A music stand could fall over. A microphone stand could fall over. I've, I've seen the damage this does all the time. I'm currently repairing a cello. Like the corner broke off and a lot of other things because a stand fell on it. So these things happen. So to prevent it, you, you basically you, you make sure you have plenty of space around you. I'll, I'll just show you with an instrument. This is one of my beautiful Pierre Lamont master violins. So, so when you're moving, you, you try to keep your instrument close to you, you know, like close where accidents can't happen. And also be very careful where you walk. Make sure you keep a distance between you and the next player or other people or walls and things like that. So, but keeping an instrument in front of you is, is a very safe option, but also you'll have a bow, of course. Um, you also have the bow, which, uh, you know, like if you hold them like that, or sometimes people will like hold the two in one, one hand, but, you know, keeping away from other objects. And then of course, being very careful where you step. Also be careful what, what's around you. Is there anything that can fall over? Is there like a cello case that can fall over? and things like that. But it's very common. I mean, Eddie Chan from Two Set had that accident just before a concert. You saw this accident. Um, check out this other accident. Like, this was an Amati violin. Hang on. Isn't that crazy? So, uh, Sportsel's blue violin was made by a violin maker, a Czech violin maker called Jan Spidlin, who is actually my age, which is great. And he made a blue violin for him. 
you know, he plays anything from a classic repertoire, but a classical repertoire to a lot of other music. I actually found one of my favorite songs uh, played by him. Watch a little bit of this. So he's a very good player. Anyway, he dropped his instrument and luckily he put out his leg and actually slowed the fall of the instrument. And as far as I know, he was actually able to continue using it. Now, what do you do if something like that has happened to your instrument? All right, I'll tell you. So first of all, you just have to check your instrument. So the first thing you do is you do a visual check. So you very carefully take your instrument and you just check just carefully. You, you might know where the impact point was, say it fell down like here. So that's probably your first thing that you're going to check. You'll check down here and what will probably happen is there'll be some kind of bump where it impacted. It's quite common that the wood is just flattened out. The back is harder than the top, so if it fell on the top, there's a bigger likelihood of a crack developing. Then you check and make sure that your bridge, like you, you look at your instrument front on, like this, and you check that the bridge, like that the strings are still aligned evenly on the fingerboard. So that's always a good sign. And you also check that the bridge is still between these nicks in the F hole. You know, that there's a straight line and that the bridge is in the middle. Then you check from the side and make sure that the bridge is straight. And you might also look at your fine tuner, just make sure it's not bent. Then you sort of start looking around a bit further. Okay, you check your fingerboard. Is the fingerboard and neck okay? And you check the scroll and then you check the whole body of the instrument carefully just to see that there are no um, cracks in the instruments or, or whole corners that have come off. If you're not in a concert situation, you, you would actually carefully knock around the instrument to check whether there are any open spots. So if you, if there's an open spot, the instrument will sound a bit different. I've got a, I'm just working on my new violin. There is a little open spot here, so you'll be able to hear it. Like, you know, where this is all glued. And then, can you hear that, that extra sort of slapping noise? Now, you're not going to do that on a half-finished white violin, but <laughs> do that on, uh, on another instrument. Then one other thing you would, you could possibly check and make sure that the sound post is still inside the instrument. So you can see the sound post a little bit just, just here on the in, inside of the instrument. And so you just want to check that it's still in there. So if all of that is okay and the instrument is still fairly well tuned, you can probably continue playing. But one thing I would always recommend is go and see your violin maker. When Eddie had his accident with his instrument, there was some open spots. So I slipped a knife in there, it opened up a little bit more. Eddie was freaking out because he was standing right here watching me, which I should never have let him do, but I did anyway. If there's a slight weakness in the instrument, it could actually fully open, you know, like open that spot. And uh, and then you just need some gluing done. Or if the, you know, you just check that everything, all the adjustments are right. You know, this is literally, I mean, this happened three hours before a concert in a sold out concert hall in Brisbane. They were going to do an emergency sound check 10 to 7. I just took the clamps off then. We went to the hall. They tried out the instrument. Okay. Uh, if I do... It sounded good, not 
wasn't quite right, like it was a bit funny on the G. So I did a bit of a sound post adjustment. We got it, so it went great. But yeah, that's about it. So first of all, try and prevent an accident from happening by being very careful around your instrument, especially if you have a valuable instrument. Secondly, beware outdoor gigs as well, like especially at dusk in the evening. There's a quite, quite a lot of outdoor concerts in the evening or at night. And you'll have a lot of dew falling. So just be careful of that as well. But generally, try and keep your instrument away from harm. So just be very careful that there's nothing around the instrument. And then when you're walking, that you have a clear path and that you, you actually look at your footing, where you're going. So that's how you can prevent it. If it's already happened, check the instrument over carefully. If it looks okay, you can keep playing. But go and see your violin maker just to make sure that there's no little hairline cracks or other problems. Anyway, hope this never happens to you. Just so you can see how often it happens, here's a few more accidents. Oh my god. Ugh. Anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button, and subscribe to my channel, and hit the little bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Keep your instrument safe and keep making beautiful music. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!